Hello everybody, it is I, Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, uh, making another video out of my backyard, yes, from Boise, Idaho. Um, this is a case study, actually, that I've been working on for, golly, about a month now, and um, actually maybe even a little bit more than that. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's been a head scratcher. So this is what happened last year, uh, around November um, we did some work to this and actually even before that, uh, we did quite a bit of work to it. And, um, so the last major job, job that we did to it was replace the timing chain and, uh, the gears and all that other good stuff, the timing cover, the water pump and whatnot. And the reason why we did that was because he, he had a, a check engine light on and it was a, it was a camshaft correlation code. And with the amount of miles that the truck has and what we know from our experience on what we worked on to make a long story short, the first thing we did was go ahead and change out the timing chain. Well, that fixed the problem. No check engine light came back on. Uh, the gentleman drove it for a while. Now, the gentleman admits that he drives pretty wild and uh, he's got an interesting driving record for driving wild. So he does like the hot rod it around and all that other good stuff. So when we went through it, we made sure everything was done right and correct. And so, and so like I said, he got it back. He was very happy uh, with it. It drove just fine. And then it sat for about 40 days, from what I understand. And after 40 days, he got back in it, and he tried to start it, from what I understand. And he told me that it didn't want to start. It was a, it was a really hard start. And so, uh, you know, I said, okay. Uh, and then from there... Over the course of about, I believe about three weeks, the uh, way the engine was running just continuously went downhill. He uh, kept running, uh, throwing random misfire codes on the engine. And at that point, we started going through it and just really doing simple stuff like uh, doing uh, re replacing the distributor. The reason for replacing the distributor is because when we, when we pulled it, we did find that the teeth were completely worn on the gear, which is a common thing. So. There were things that uh, we did find to warrant some of the issues he was having. The only problem is, is per the data that we were pulling off of the computer, uh, the visual inspections and the parts that we were changing per the diagnosis, none of that was fixing it. So we ended up sitting on it for a while, kind of scratching our heads on it. And at that point, we uh, decided to go ahead and just warranty out the timing chain just in case because it's really honestly if you've done you know 10 20 of these engines 50 100 of these engines of these 57 vortex the timing on them uh they're pretty simple you even know when to be careful uh from running into broken bolts on the water pump and stuff like that so you know that's something that we were able to do simple just redo it for them again upon redoing the timing and the reason why we just went ahead and warranty that out and did it for them was it allowed us to turn the crank by hand, inspect, uh, pull the valve covers, inspect the valves, inspect the springs, make sure everything was moving. What we did not do at the time was pull the upper intake because then that would have meant that we would have had to buy all new intake gaskets and clean everything all out again and go from there. And so uh, what, we, um, what we did at that point was turn everything over by hand, uh, leaving the distributor out, we inspected uh down inside of that hole with the camera to make sure that that the gear on the uh on the camshaft was was still good and uh you know we made sure that our valves and rockers and push rods were opening and closing and so we visually inspected everything and everything turned out to be okay so once again still no reason why we should be having the problems that we were having especially after making some of the repairs that we made so we uh, then sat on it again for a little bit. And at that point, I started checking grounds and electrical issues and other things. Uh, and we went ahead and decided to, before we got it up and running, to go ahead and get another computer and put the Tech 2 on it. And uh, so we went ahead and did that. And at that point, that's when we decided to go ahead and pull the engine. And the whole point for pulling the engine was to go ahead and go through it one last time with a fine tooth comb. Now, some things that we had not repaired on it in the past are things like the rear main seal and other issues like that that you would repair uh, when you pull the engine. 
So since the rear main seal leaks like a sieve and so do certain oil lines and cooler lines and everything else leak, we went ahead and decided to go ahead and uh, start buying up some of these parts as time goes on and uh, get the engine pulled. While we pull the engine, we went ahead and said we're going to go through with another fine tooth comb. And that's when we went ahead and said, well, let's do this. Let's go ahead and pull the uh, upper intake. And the reason why we pulled the upper intake was so that we could place an engine plate down on the lower intake and go ahead and remove the hood and pull the engine out. Now, one of the steps in removing the upper intake is to uh, and install your engine plate is to also remove what's called on this engine and it's GM's own fuel injection system. Uh, it's called central sequential fuel injection, which is also known as, in simple terms, your spider injectors, which is your, your piece right here. And then you've got your fuel injectors that go, you can see, into, into each cylinders right there. And then you've got a cylinder here, a cylinder here. And this is where the fuel is introduced. Fuel and oxygen is introduced into your cylinder through the intakes and the fuel in, and the and the CSFI. It's not multi-port fuel injection, it's C F uh, C S F I. It's a tongue twister and it is GM's engineered own fuel injection system for the Vortec engine. So and when we got to that point, that's when we realized that um, we had found our problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause it because and show you what our problem is and the reason why it's a big deal is because i've got 17 years experience doing this 10 in some really high-end shops back home in dallas uh at this point seven years working for myself uh successfully i've seen quite a few things but even at 17 years experience and a certified master technician i still have a mentor and my mentor has 55 years experience. And uh, out of that 55 years experience, he's got 35 years experience as an actual shop owner. Owner, And uh, he's not just a certified automotive technician. He's actually a degreed automotive engineer, mechanical, electrical, you name it, degreed engineer across the board. So even with him, he, uh, with his 55 years experience, my 17 years experience, what we found on this engine, we have yet to see. And if you search the internet for it, it's hard to find. I can't answer why, but it does happen. And I'm going to pause it right now and show you. Okay, folks. So what we have here is the lower intake manifold. Uh, let me get set up here. Here we go. This is the lower intake manifold for the Chevy GM 5.7 liter engine. Now this is off of a 97. And as you know, this thing was misfiring, causing all kinds of problems and, problems and issues. And uh, we were looking for every reason to go into the engine and look. Uh, upon pulling the engine to replace the rear main seal and do some other work, plus double check our work, I looked for reasons why this engine started acting the way it acted. Uh, we had to pull the upper intake actually and in order to do that you have to pull the spider fuel injection system as most people call it the actual technical term for this is and here's a tongue twister again central sequential fuel injection system so in other words all of your electronics and hardware is basically inside of here and then your injector has a valve inside of here and in order to uninstall this, it's actually very easy. There's normally a clip here, and you just, uh, you know, unclip that. And, uh, you know, or actually to start off, you pull your plug, and you pull your upper intake, and then this sits in a clip. And then to pull your fuel injectors for each cylinder, you just squeeze together the plastic poppet, and you pull them out, okay? And each one has two... plastic clips that hold them in. Well, we knew that a lot of our problems were in cylinder number three during this diagnosis, and we had at one point suspected a bad fuel injector, but what we did not suspect is what we we're about to find. So here we are 
We're getting up to the fuel injectors in cylinder three. And we notice when we get to it, as we're getting ready to pull this, we notice that we're missing one side of our poppet. We're like, oh man, well that's not good. Let me see if this lighting will do any good for you. So yeah, we notice that we're missing one side of our poppet there. And we're, I'm just thinking, well, that's not good. So I go to pull it out. And before I do, I want you to notice this one right here, okay? First of all, notice the amount of carbon that's built up on, on the end of these. That's quite a bit, actually. And you have your plastic poppet. And then inside of there, you have your valve. And that's where your atomized fuel is introduced into the cylinder. Okay. So, if you notice that one. So, I go to pull this one out. It's missing. And the first thing I notice is, wow, that's a big difference. Can you see the difference in those two? Look at the tips. That is melted. Cylinder number three fuel injector is melted. Okay. <laughs> well, what? What the heck causes that? All right. So at that point, I got real excited because, bam, there's your problem right there. Finally, we have an answer to this random misfire after we've gone through everything and have done everything that you can think of that any weekend warrior would do, and not on, uh, on top of a weekend warrior, a certified technician would do, including pulling valve covers and <laughs> inspecting things, uh, hooking the computer up to it, checking the timing advance, blah, 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 blah. Uh, hours upon hours worth of diagnostics to the point to where we finally could justify pulling hard parts because you know we're gonna have to replace all these gaskets and that, that costs money and time and all that other stuff. So we now found this and I've never seen this. Um, not on this engine before, I haven't. Um, I've maybe done 50 to 100, maybe more in 16 years. Um, I don't know, golly, I can't even remember. I mean, if I were to open up my filing cabinet now of invoices on these engine uh, engines, it's, you know, that thick. So I've been all through these engines and I've seen bad fuel in injectors, but I've never seen one melted like this. And so um, I started getting into it and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just reinstall these. And as you can see, they're, they're pretty simple to reinstall. They pretty much find their own home so long as you're gentle with them. Okay, so here we are installed now, and I want to show you a few ways this happens. First and foremost, if you can look inside of there, you'll see where your fuel injectors stick out. Now this one, you can see is all flowered out. And you can also see that there's a lot of carbon buildup inside of this. Not as much as some, but there's definitely carbon buildup inside of there. And you can see the difference in the two of those. And this is kind of a flaw, I think. Because what happens is this injector right here uh, retains and attracts and generates a lot of heat, from what I understand. Okay? And that causes carbon buildup and causes that, as you can see, the ball bearing that valve causes that valve to stick, open, close, partially open or close, and can cause all kinds of problems. Carbon buildup is also what causes these to melt. So what we're looking at here is an issue with the way this is put together, with the way this is built. And it's after doing some research and I actually spoke with, uh, I spoke with my engineer buddy and I spoke with a couple other techs. I got some other heads in on this. Um, only one other has seen it like this before. And uh, GM does have an answer and a repair for this. It is a little pricey though. 
that's that's just it but it's a it's a pretty genius repair so now let's go back to and so there you go there's the answer as to why this car has acted the way it has and um, also the answer as to why that fuel injector looks like that so now let's go back to what this is okay this is again this is a CSFI uh, fuel injection system which is a central sequential fuel injection system most of the hardware and electronics is all inside of here and that's why you have a plastic poppet and that's why it's made this way and put together to keep it simple the answer is is to change it to what's known as a multi-port fuel injection system MPFI now the multi-port fuel injection system puts a electronic puts a little teeny tiny it, it replaces this with a little teeny tiny fuel electronic fuel injector that has a little plug plugged into it and what the difference is 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 on the electronic fuel injector it has a plastic pintle that transfers heat away from the fuel injector and so therefore doesn't cause carbon buildup and you never have this issue ever again and uh, from what I'm looking around on the internet those kits range anywhere from 400 on up to six hundred dollars uh, or more plus you've got gaskets and everything else uh, that you need in order to put this back together so 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 there you have it folks if uh, if you have a Chevy GM and uh, you know for a fact you've got the CFSI better known as the spider fuel system set up on it and you have random misfire codes or a hard cylinder misfire code and you've gone through everything you've even let's say you've even uh, redone the timing and replaced uh, crankshaft position sensors you've replaced coils uh, you've replaced I mean you name it and you still have an issue and you're either dead in the water or you're backfiring or you're doing something funny go ahead and pull that upper intake and go ahead and start checking your fuel injectors you never know you just may find one of these and uh, there's a few different reasons everything from carbon buildup to the fuel injector just dying by itself and it just getting hot uh in, inside of there is the reason so all right folks well this is matthew shaughnessy your friendly neighborhood technician signing off